Now you're looking at over a half a million Westcott pushpins. You and your teammate must place each pushpin into a six foot by four foot cork board, one by one. I use my hands for a living and you want me to push thousands of pushpins into a board to make a piece of art? This is absurd. This is gonna be a tough day. Whoa. There's a nude model. This is crazy. Oh, damn. Today's gonna be fine. The guys are gonna be more nervous than we are. Holy Welcome to your initiation. Initiation? I don't even know what that is. This is your first flash challenge, designed to test your fundamentals. My stomach is going flips right now. It's divided into three different rounds. Complete one round and you'll move on to the next. Three rounds? Crazy. You have four hours to complete all three rounds. Get stuck and your first challenge in this competition will be a fail. This is round one. You must create a full body sketch of this model. I've never done a live drawing before. This is the worst challenge I've ever been faced with in my life. Once you're satisfied that your drawing is a true representation of your artistic skill, then you can move on to the next round. And your time starts now. Let's go. This is the toughest first week in Ink Master history. We're expecting these artists to be able to draw, be able to execute, and really stand up and show us what they can do. Just keeps moving. I know time's gonna be a factor. I'm gonna make sure I'm not stuck at the back of the pack, and whoever's in the front, I wanna be hot on their heels. Homegirl ran out pretty fast. I hope she got enough You have to assemble tattoo machine from Seth Safari. Right on. Sweet. I got this. I've been building tattoo machines for almost 15 years. I'm screwed in the second round. to round three. Thanks, sir. You're gonna use the drawing that you did earlier, coupled with the machines that you just built, you're gonna reproduce that right on the pig. Oh, okay. Right out of the gate, we're gonna test fundamentals. One is assembling your tools, one is drawing, and finally, we're gonna test them on tattooing. How good are they at executing their drawing? That's why today, these challenges are their initiation. 15 minutes remaining. I wasted way too much time drawing. Now I'm getting a little nervous. I have been an athlete my whole life. I play college basketball. Every sport you can think of, they all have the same fundamentals. Without discipline, you have no direction. Five, four, three, two, one. That is it, time's up, machine's down. No more ink. I feel like a idiot. I know how to build a tattoo machine, but the pressure of the competition got to me. I failed. This is not a good way to start this competition. Artists, it is now time to critique your work. Anthony. The execution you did in the drawing would not lead me to believe that this is what you would be working towards. So what you did get done is much better than what I would have imagined was coming. Christian. Starting off with the sketch, the face on it is a beautiful face that translates right over to your tattoo. You definitely added more details into the tattoo than you have in your drawing. I think it's a great job. Thanks, Alex. This is one hell of a train wreck of a tattoo, man. I was having some trouble with my machines. The tattoo itself, man, it, it looks just like your body language. It looks nervous. This tattoo for me is a pretty big letdown. Chris, how did you find this challenge today? I could have done more, but I didn't bother. Oh, you didn't bother. You're representing yourself, and this is what the whole world's gonna see. Could have been a lot better, but I didn't need it. Okay. That's a first. It's a first, yeah. Yeah, good. Who the f does this guy think he is? I put my life on hold just to be here, and this guy's treating it like a child's game. Corey. I think your drawing's the best drawing in the room. Those beautiful lines that you have on paper don't show through on this particular tattoo. The shader was not hitting at all like I wanted it to. I don't think your machines were really running properly. It's a really rough tattoo. 
Megan Jean. I really like your drawing a lot. It's just very loose, very free. I love drawing figures. Being able to get this accomplished shows good confidence and definitely fundamentals in drawing ability. Thank you. Ashley. We don't have any tattooing to look at, so we look at your drawing, the proportion of the hands and feet to the rest of the body, very tiny. With that being said, it would be hard to know that the Ink Master can't build a machine. So Picasso, what happened? I totally spaced out on how to build a machine. That's the one thing I should have Looking at your drawing, there's no doubt that I want to see a tattoo from you. It's got a real sense of your own style, but also you captured that model amazingly. But obviously, tattoo machines, man, they got to run. Rough day. Yeah. I think we have two obvious weak links right now. To me, all these other artists look like prey. The judges have decided that the winner of the first Flash Challenge is Christian. The finished product is smooth. You see the quality of the line work. You see the quality of the shading. That shows me who I want to see more work from. The eight of you know firsthand that this competition is more intense than ever. Each week, a veteran artist returns to fight you. But in the end, only one artist will win $100,000, a feature in Inked Magazine, and the title of Ink Master. This week, you're being judged on contrast. Today's Flash Challenge, you must sift through these heaps of trash to find items to build a sculpture. Me? But that is not what we're judging. A beam of light will be projected onto your sculpture from the front, creating an enormous shadow on a 12-foot by 10-foot surface. Get the out of here. You must use contrast between light and dark to create a clear, recognizable image in the shadow. Instead of looking like garbage, your sculpture must look like something else entirely. What? So basically, I'm taking garbage and creating shadow puppets, right? Yeah? And for the first time in this competition, you must work in teams of two. You have three hours, and your time begins now. Today, these artists are gonna have to work in teams. Let's just jump into it. Let's okay. start getting our materials and see what we can do. If you take a beam of light and you put something in front of it, the depth of where the object in front of the light is will cast a darker or lighter shadow. If they play with their depth of field today, they'll get different contrasting shadows. What we can do to make this skyline, we can set up boxes going up. Alex came up with the idea of doing a skyline. That's stupid. My idea is completely different from this a really dope, like, huge tree. We can cut out a lot of the plastic to make uh, the leaves. It's gonna be better, though, with the contrast. You sure? My ideas are clearly the ones we're using today. This is better with the layering. There's no question, I'm gonna take charge. This is my team. Are we doing this? This is what I wanna do. We need to find one piece that inspires us. I'm starting to feel like I'm the gopher digging for random trash so that Mark can hold it in front of the light and see if God strikes him with a brilliant idea. We're gonna around and just keep looking for do you mind being the cutter so I could tape all this? Sure. That's pretty good. That's beautiful. We got this. What the f are these two doing? That's weird. Picasso and Chris are hanging themselves right now. They have absolutely no contrast. Yeah, dude, it's nice. We're doing a werewolf, which is a very identifiable image. Yes, sir. The bold silhouette is gonna show contrast. Pretty good for garbage pail and shears. Megan definitely hooked me up putting me with Anthony. There were a lot worse choices out there. Baby fingers since the air. That was a smart move, because if you cross me, I'll rip you to shreds. Final hour remaining. Final hour, guys. This is way harder than I thought. I need to get that edge of the wave a little sharper. We're creating shadows underwater with rocks, and I just can't get that wave sharp enough. Five, four, three, two, one. That is it. Time is up. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. I think we pulled it out there. That was tough. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Chris and Picasso's piece is absolutely bizarre. It's completely out of focus, and nobody has any idea what it is. That's just a cluster <laughs> right there. What the hell are you thinking? Anthony and Christian. 
We already had the circular shape, depicted that as the full moon, so we decided to go with a werewolf theme. I like that you have a range of using where the light actually hits the objects to create some things heavier and darker and create the contrast that way. I do love the different techniques you used, some clear plastic, some stuff closer to the lens to get out of focus. I think there's a lot of little intricate details in here that played out pretty smart. Thanks. Megan Jean and St. Mark hit the lights. You guys did a graveyard scene with these real gnarled trees. I really like that, the moss hanging off them. There's a lot of really nice elements here and they're all very easy to tell what they are. I like the way that you guys composed it. I like that the depth of field with the light racks things in and out of focus. I believe that I can look back into this thing and see other stuff going on. I think the contrast really worked out to your advantage and I think you did a great job. Alex and Ashley hit that light. What I really am impressed with is what you've done with the leaves in terms of having different types of leaves with the clear garbage, and then actually going in and drawing the veins in the leaves to create different textures within the foliage up there. You also did a really nice touch using that clear plastic to create the smoke on the cigarette there. Overall, pretty outstanding job. Chris and Picasso, let's check it out. We tried to go for an underwater scene. Color is a lot harder than it looks. It's just a little bit of red, a little bit of green, out of focus. There's not a lot of real crisp, direct imagery in it. So from a distance, it just comes off as unfinished. Everyone else seems to copy each other's approach. Me and Picasso, we just use the colors, the shapes. It's disappointing. Me and Picasso, we don't art. Today, some of you made inventive choices that showed crisp contrast. The judges have decided the winners of today's Flash Challenge are Ashley and Alex. Awesome. You were able to use the entire canvas, and you did something a little different than everybody else, and that gets rewarded. Thank you so much. I'm a bossy bitch when it comes to working in a group, but that's because I'm never wrong. I have control. I have skull pick. I'm so excited. For today's Flash Challenge, you must use creativity to make an extraordinary work of art using a common everyday item. Salt. Salt. I don't know what he's talking about. Salt? What are you, nuts? What, are we hanging out at a diner? Gonna play with some salt on the table? The more limited your resources are, the more creativity it takes to make something incredible. First, you must stencil your design onto a four foot by eight foot adhesive board. Then, carefully apply various grains of salt to create your masterpiece. Today, you will have help, but you'll also have to compromise because once again, you must work in teams of two. There's no way I'm gonna give somebody an advantage by putting two guys that know what they're doing on a team, except for myself. I could win every challenge from here on out. Artists, one by one, please read the number on the bottom of your skull to determine your teams. One. Four. Four. I picked Picasso because I've seen his artistic ability, and this Edward Scissorhands looking mother is like super creative. Two. Two. St. Mark, he's a prick. Clean, you son of a bitch. Three. Three. I'm stoked to be working with Megan. She's part of my alliance. She's super creative. Clean made a big mistake. Number one. One artist, one good one, she can bring him down. Those are the teams. The winners of the Flash Challenge will have the power to assign all human canvases in the elimination tattoo as a team. You have four hours to show creativity using only salt. And your time begins now. Let's do this. I'm gonna run through ideas with you. We gotta figure out subject matter. Today's challenge is out of the box. It's something that I can almost promise that none of these artists have ever done before, and that's the whole point that we're testing them on it. If we did like a badass skull, the eyes would be super white. Just to see what they'll come up with in a completely unfamiliar environment. Our shadows themselves are really cool, and if we do the silhouette of like a sexy woman, Megan, I mean, you can make like really Megan, cool. that's like awesome. If somebody's not a good artist overall, this is gonna be a tough day. Megan Jean is making a silhouette of herself. So you tell me what you think. I pictured um, the skyline. Everybody else is going to do the skyline. It's what's right in front of us. That's not creative. How do you think that would work with creativity? 
I won the last flash challenge. I need to get Anthony to agree with me. Something bigger to work with will be better. The first thing that came to my head was a dope, like, skull with a huge headdress. OK, I just need to come up with a drawing. Two hours to go, everybody. Two hours. I am so salty right now. I want to die. Dude, that looks rad. That does look good. That's dope. All you really need is some lines. That's it. Scrape out some lines. We need a couple of finger waves just like those. I think you're underestimating the time it's going to take to salt this thing. It won't matter. You sure? Yeah. St. Mark is starting to piss me off. Hey, man, it's a team challenge, right? I got this for a minute. Go sit down. It's the Mark show all day. Is it? Not a surprise. Man. I hate koi fish. It's a played out design, dude. One hour remaining. Final hour. We're doing a skull with a candle on the top, with a moth being attracted to it. I think it's pretty creative. Don't get too crazy. You don't want it white on that wing. The only problem is, once you put the salt on, you can't get it off. Let's give it a good cleaning. This guy's just throwing salt like it's a set of french fries. Remember, you want contrast. You want nothing lighter than the flame behind it. There's salt everywhere. This is the worst challenge of my Ink Master career. Five. Need more time. Three, two, one. That is it. Time is up. I think it looks great. I'm really proud of it. I think it was a great piece of art. I still wish we did something a little different. Alex has checked out. I think he could be tossing this challenge in the trash just to put Mark in a really bad position. Artists, it is now time to critique your work. Alex and St. Mark, whose concept was it? That was mine. Alex, what specifically did you work on here? I, uh, I cut out the waves and I I cut all the waves out. What are you talking about? He was having some oh, problems with the heat. By all means, tell him what I did. I thought it was a stupid right. design. You seem a little hostile, Alex. When I would start doing something, he'd be like, no, 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 don't do that. I had to redraw the waves. I can, I can go hang out. The anatomy of the koi is way off. The spine starting at the head really throws a dent into the flow and the shape of the actual koi itself. It makes it really short and fat. The realistic eye is also a big miss hit. You do that, buddy. Don't touch me, you douchebag. Megan Jean and Christian. I'm really super impressed with the figure there and how you were able to get the flowing garment so beautifully enhanced like that. The use the shadow, it gives it a different style of art look. It doesn't look like a painting. The contrast is amazing. This thing stands out. Really clean, very straightforward. Creativity really shows in this challenge. Anthony and Ashley. If you would have maybe positioned the moon behind the feathers up top, it would have made it look a lot stronger. Picasso and clean. You have a skull silhouette, and that's pretty much it. We tried to go for different textures, three different elements, light. It doesn't seem very creative. It's really lackluster on this challenge. If you don't like it, you don't like it. You just weren't feeling it. I thought, I thought we were feeling it. I know. Clean and Picasso's piece is awful. It looks like a moth taking a on a skull. Ours is going to win. The judges have decided that the winners of the Flash Challenge are Megan Jean and Christian. Definitely the creativity is what stands out the most. He took an artistic approach, and even from a distance, it does look like a finished art piece, which is nice for this challenge. I feel fantastic. This is two out of three Flash Challenges. I'm doing great. Today, you must tattoo something so unique that in this courtroom, it can be the difference between a conviction and an acquittal. A fingerprint. Fingerprints are comprised of so many little concentric lines and tiny little details. Putting that many lines close together can be incredibly difficult without screwing up. But that is not all. For this flash challenge, the judges aren't the only ones inspecting your work, because today we are joined by a forensics expert. Detective Adrian Gardner is a crime scene investigator specializing in latent fingerprint analysis and comparison. And she's here to determine if your tattoo can stand up as evidence in a court of law. This is crazy. You have each been randomly assigned a canvas. Each of your canvases has brought in a loved one whose fingerprint they want tattooed. Detective Gardner will fingerprint each person. Then you must tattoo an exact replica of that print onto your canvas. If you don't pay attention to detail, your canvas will end up with someone else's print. Sit over here, but have your shoulder kind of off. It's really important for me to get back on the horse. 
the judges think. I don't have any technical ability. They're mistaken. No, they're gonna judge every little corner. I'm gonna get this as perfect as I can and show them I'm not just an artist, I'm a tattoo artist. I'm doing this hard because I just can't get the detail that everybody else does, but I can win points on creativity and my canvas is gonna walk out with the coolest tattoo in the room. I like how you shaped it like a heart. Awesome. This challenge is extremely difficult. Most of my tattoos, there's room for artistic interpretation. It's easy to hide little mistakes. But in this challenge, there's no room for error. If I mess up, I can't hide it. And I'm gonna go around and like thicken up some lines so it really looks just like the print. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up, machine's down. No more ink. That looks exactly like it. <laughs> it's got his scar in there and everything. You like? Yeah. Good deal, thank you. Christian's trying to camouflage his crappy line work with a bunch of extra garbage around it. Why are you doing that on a detail challenge? All right, guys, time to critique your work. Alex. The lines are very crisp, very clean, very smooth. It's a pleasing tattoo to look at. Detective Gardner, after your analysis, what have we got? This print does have a lot of detail that is in agreement, but there is a bifurcation here. If you were to follow the ridge down, it meets what we call the delta. On this print, it's actually supposed to be inside. Because he did this, all the points are shifted by one ridge. We would call it an exclusion. St. Mark, how does it feel to have your fingerprint immortally placed on your son forever? I feel very honored. Looking at it very close, the detail seems very exact. This is probably about the exact size I guessed that it would need it to be. Detective Gardner, in terms of detail, would this be 100% match? There is enough detail in agreement to make an identification. I would call it a match. Christian. Obviously, you went with a Sacred Heart design. I knew that I didn't have the level of accuracy that some of the other prints had, so I started thinking, you know what? I'm gonna give Mike a badass tattoo. Just looking at the known print, you can see this one is a little bit more challenging. As people age, the ridges lose elasticity. That was the case here. Doing a side-by-side -side comparison, there's not enough detail. I wouldn't say this isn't hers, but I wouldn't say it's a match. Inconclusive. Inconclusive. Sausage. It didn't have any discrepancies. It's definitely a match. You did this thing meticulously. You really hit the details spot on, and it was a nice, clean, good, professional job. Clean. There's a lot of very small details. There's actually the texture of the waves that gives it a real authentic fingerprint look. Detective Gardner, your analysis concluded? This print was definitely a match. He got all the points dead on. Anthony. Every ridge was right on point. This print was definitely a match. It looks very crisp, especially for the smaller size you went with. It seems like you had a little time to spare, so you went ahead and gave this man a present. Aside from the fingerprint, great craftsmanship and a real keen eye. As much as I want to talk bad about Anthony, I freaking can't. He makes me nervous in this competition because he has not been tattooing very long and he is swinging for the fences. This kid has come to play. Megan Jean. All the points in this print were 100% in sequence with each other, no discrepancies at all. Just using clean lines instead of showing the textures, it's a smart move. It makes for an interesting art piece and the legibility on this is great. Picasso. It is a lot of line work, very close together, that down the road would be more likely for some of the lines to start to butt together and to darken up. There is a little bit of a discrepancy. There's a big void here, but in the known print, there's actually a little island. Also, here we have a ridge that was supposed to continue to go, and he ended it. Damn it, I'm disappointed. I really wanted to be on top this time. If this next challenge doesn't play to my string, I could be The judges have decided the winner of the Flash Challenge is Clean Rock One. Wow. The way you showed the texture in the finger but still have the legibility and breathability gives you the nod. Contortionists combine art and science by bending their bodies into creative and sometimes shocking shapes. Today, you must once again work in teams of two. Each team will be randomly assigned a pair of contortionists. Pose your canvases and then use body paint to transform them into something else completely. This week, you are being judged on color theory. 
We can do like an alligator head. I was thinking like swan. Every idea falling out of Alex's mouth right now is absolute horse We should try to do like a macaw. I have no idea what that bird looks like. Oh, it's fine. I got it. Okay. Don't worry about it. I have to take the lead in this challenge because Alex doesn't have anything to bring. This is the one, dude. This is the one. If we get that skull pick, we can totally take over. I've got 99 problems and they're all Alex. I'm imagining it's like some body styles. Like say like she's been over. Yeah, her, yeah. Her head's here. I don't know. I started to get some sort of like a clown face. The clown idea is killer. We're at Coney Island. A laughing clown seems perfect subject matter. We're gonna have our contortionist actually twerk, so it's gonna make the clown laugh. This is gonna be awesome. I think like a spider would be like a really badass. Or what I'm thinking is like if one arch this way and one arch this way, would that not give you kind of a scorpion shape? I, I need to see them in their positions again. That was a scorpion. Yes. Because then now it's the body. Yeah, look at the legs, dude. Yeah. We should sketch out where they are real quick, take them apart, and then figure out where we're painting them. Two more hours. Two more hours. If we put her in front of him, maybe it legs out. Then we've got some kind of like facial structure with, you know what I'm saying? Something with horns. Like a hell skull or something? Do a demon like an pony. Yes. Nice. Yes. All right. We wasted a lot of time trying to figure out what the hell we were going to do. Now that we got it, it's going to be a sprint to the finish line. We've got two airbrushes. Let's start painting, dude. Yours can be really light on the back. It doesn't have to be really solid. Sausage seems like a really sweet little jolly dude, but he's starting to act like a dick. What do you think, white highlights? I don't know if it needs white highlights. They have like yellow pops here and there. That's what we should use for a highlight color. I'm just trying to do something that's gonna pop out because if this is gonna be the front of him and it's gonna be the main focus of it. He won't listen to my ideas. I had a bottle of white. I think that I have a stronger stake in this challenge than she does. I especially need to do well because I need to get control of this game and show my presence as a fierce competitor. How are you feeling? Not exactly how I would have used color theory, but it's a cool subject matter we got. We gotta win this one, Mark. This one's for the veterans. It's the badasses versus the non-badasses. Clean and St. Mark are spray painting buttholes all day long and they're laughing their ass off. <laughs> I'm taking this serious. If this ass clown wins the challenge, I will punch everybody in the face right now. That's it, machine's down, time is up. It's dope, dude. Sausage and Megan Jean's piece is absolutely ridiculous. I have no idea what they're doing. There is no rainbow scorpion. It's rainbow colored, it doesn't have the right amount of legs, and it looks like garbage. The color theory in this is great. I like the way that you did the white teeth really strong. You have the symmetrical red mouth coming around, cradling that. Then you have the actual hair that plays off of the red and the white. So as far as your color theory goes, the palette's very nice. Very simple pose, very creative idea to come up with to make a clown. Alex and Maddie. The colors are very bright but the details are weak for it to really be a strong standout image. The overall idea is a strong one. It's just the final execution. It's sloppy. Who knew that color theory meant put the whole rainbow on somebody? Anybody that's paired with Alex is bound to fail. Sausage and Megan Jean. Obviously, you guys went with a scorpion design. We went with warm temperatures to show that the animal's dangerous. And then we put cool colors into the legs, making all of the extremities read together. The creativity on this is really over the top. Contorting them in this position, the four limbs of the scorpion, that tail flip up together with reds and bright yellows. It all pops off the black backdrop. It shows for a stronger art piece. Anthony and Kristen. The majority of your detail and imagery is on the flat back. It's not the most creative use of the two figures. She said she was really comfortable in the splits. We just decided to go for it. What you've done, I don't really think is anything more than you could accomplish with one model. You also didn't do anything to really play one color off the other. All Christian and Anthony did was just paint this dude's back and told him to lay down. How creative is that? Me and Mark killed it. There's no way we're not gonna win. Today, you had to use color theory 
to transform your canvases into something else completely. The judges have decided the winners of the Flash Challenge are Sausage and Megan G. When the canvas is contorted, it immediately jumped out, creating that dynamic shape. It was just that extra step. For today's Flash Challenge, working in teams of two, you must use a power washer to strategically blast a massive design onto a 53-foot semi. These trucks are huge. That's a lot of ground to cover for just two people. Oh, my God. crazy. I got into tattooing specifically to not do manual labor. You have four hours to create a dynamic composition on a semi, and your time starts now. I don't know if we need the whole truck. We just need the smaller elements that create a bigger image. But even if we only did this much, at least we're creating what the rules of it are. We don't feel that we have to blast off 53 feet in order to win. Let's just think smart and efficient. I think so too. We're gonna go smaller with as much detail as possible. What I was thinking is doing like a big cobra. Over here had a big dagger. Let's throw some bones in here. Bones is good. It's taking me back to my train bombing days right here. Clean has a graffiti background, and he's had the most skull picks in this competition. I would be stupid not to follow his lead. You want me to take the reins and get it laid out? Yeah. It would be nice to have a little help around here. Alex is a tiny little guy. I don't even think he has the strength to hold the pressure washer. You know how this turns on more? Oh, your hose is kinked. See how it's kinked right there? I'm gonna have to work twice as hard because I'm gonna have to pick up his slack. Two hours remaining, everybody. Two hours. Well, I think you're the star of this today. My arms are gonna be so sore tomorrow. Go quick. Don't, don't be so precision with it. Otherwise, we're gonna be here all day. All right. Like a little rounder. It's a little football shape there. Oh, OK. I was expecting Maddie to be kind of an asshole, but we're working well together, and everything's coming out really good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Guess what, Sausage? You get skull picks, and you yourself. We're going to spank you like a little baby. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is either. It looks like a jellyfish eating the city. Me and Anthony are busting our ass to do 55 feet of artwork, and Sausage and Jimmy are doing a piece of broccoli about three feet wide on theirs. Sausage, you drop the ball. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time is up. We did it. I feel good. Awesome, dude. We got a lot done. A lot of it. A lot it, of though. detail. We covered the whole entire truck, man. Dude, Jimmy and Sausage are screwed. What happened over? Oh, wait, here it is. They're not even using the whole truck. We did the whole truck. We didn't do a. Uh, it's uh, not my fault. One third of it. One third of it. That's your fault. It's not about the size. First rule of composition fill the frame, bro. Time to critique your work. Alex and Clean. You guys definitely use the entire space, and that's commendable. I like the flow of the snake a lot. I like the way that it plays in and out of the bones. I'm stoked to see a large scale piece, but when you get up close, you can see how messy it is. The bones don't really line up as they go through. The dagger looks a little wonky. The detail is minimal. He kind of falls short. Christian and Megan Jean, what exactly are you guys showing us here in this design? It was Medusa we went with. What are these elements on the sides of the truck? Stone wall that you can see Medusa through. It looks like an angry turtle. It's a little bit hard to tell what exactly going on, and I feel like some finer details could have just made these images stand out. The balance composition is nice. I feel like you just miss it with the tools, and that's what really was a tough break today. Jimmy and Sausage, what exactly did you do here? What we tried to create is some cool buildings that were up front, but if you stand back and you see the overall picture, that you see the skull and the nuclear clouds, like an apocalyptic scene. It's disappointing that you didn't just attack this whole trailer. You're already starting off at a deficit. Bigger isn't always better. I think that giving you a 53-foot canvas is a pretty clear suggestion that it's supposed to be a large piece of art. Jimmy is like, what are the rules? How do we do things to what the judges said? Blow it out your ass and do a piece of good artwork. Maddie and Anthony. Doing landscape is a great way to show composition. You didn't use up the entire truck, but compared to the people that did use the entire truck, you have a lot more concentrated details. Getting the texture in a tree, getting the waves in the water by the arc of the pressure washer. You have some really nice areas in the foreground, this big rock with the dark shadow to play off of the water. And I really love the silhouette of the bird dead in the center. It gives it a great focal point, and you did use the whole truck in my opinion. That stuff doesn't come off on its own. You worked from one side to the other using 53 feet the way I see it. How 
hard is it to do a mountain? Today, some of you used composition to create striking images. The judges have decided the winners of the Flash Challenge are Anthony and Maddie. The execution was spot on, and getting to the word composition, undeniably, you hit it out of the park. For today's Flash Challenge, you must design custom lettering from scratch without using any reference. Coming up with your own original font? Yeah, that's hard. There's so much room for error. And you must tattoo body parts so small, but so visible, precision is absolutely necessary. The knuckles. Tattooing the knuckles is difficult because if you go too deep or if you blow it out, you're screwed. And if you don't get it in there deep enough, it's not gonna stay. Your knuckles are super visible. You can't hide them unless you're wearing a glove. Oh. You have three hours to tattoo your canvas's knuckles with custom lettering. And your time starts now. How you doing? Sausage. How you doing? Today, the stakes are the highest they're going to be. I'm just going to take my time and try and get the letters to all look like they go together. Precision's everything when it comes to knuckle tattoos. I want to do something that's bold, that has a lot of little tricks in it. It is an awkward shape to stretch, an awkward shape to hold. You see a lot of tattooers not really sure how exactly to place their hand to be able to run a perfectly straight line. So I'm just going to take each individual finger and kind of wrap it like okay. this. Keep your hand as limp as you can. There's no hiding your hands if it's not done properly. You're All right, guys, one hour remaining. One hour to go. There's a lot of stress going into this knuckle tattoo because it's negative letters. Since you're making it negative, it's gotta be like thicker parts in it, you know? I have to tattoo the outside of the finger and not the inside of the letter. So it's still... I can't make them too small or too thin or else it'll close up over time. Keep them real nice and clean. I have to be super careful. Five, four, three, two, one. Machines down, no more ink. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Thank Come you. here. It's definitely my style, so awesome. Where's Sarah getting her font from? A dumpster? I can't believe that Sarah is such a specialist that she can't even do letters. <laughs> okay, artists, it's now time to critique your work. Maddie, when I heard the idea of the negative lettering, I wasn't quite sure how that would go, and I think you did a really great job here. I tried to be really precise with the lines. I used some stippling in the background so it doesn't get all muddied up as time goes on. The stipple effect gives it a nice fade, gives him the negative approach that he wanted. Great job. Sausage, when you got here, you insisted no black. What happened? I listened to my artist. I think the color came out nice, but your line work is lacking some precision here. You have some discrepancies in some of the lines where your lines in, some of them trail off, some of them in bluntly. Particularly on the bottom of the F, it just doesn't end as nicely as the I's or the R. Sausage is a bad tattoo. He just didn't make good decisions. He's totally screwed. Jimmy, one of the great tests of precision is when you have two of the same letters, keeping those letters similar, which you've done here with the S's, and it's delicate and feminine. I think it's exactly what you wanted. Christian. The most impressive part about your tattoo is how perfectly they line up straight across both knuckles. This is probably the straightest lettering of the day. Precision in this really is your application with your color. It's a good job. Thanks. Anthony. Your big lines are all bold and solid, but I gotta call you out on the precision. The consistency in the small lines is very wavering. You're spelling killer a certain way, so you're already dealing with something that's difficult to read, and then you got a very elaborate font there. Maybe not the most legible thing. Megan Jean. Your tattoos stand out really bold, and when you look at them close, they look very clean. There's only really one discrepancy on the way you did the traditional A's. You have the line going through the open part of the A instead of it just coming out from behind it. But I think it's very strong. Clean. They're definitely very strong, bold tattoos. The black is nice. A little bit of gray highlights give a finesse. You have three letters that you have on both fingers. You have the L, the I, and the E. They all match perfectly, which really shows that you're able to mimic your own lettering repeatedly. It's strong. Thanks. Sarah. Some of the lines look a little more sculpted than others. The farthest right portion of the W is a little bit close to the center, so aging over time, you could have an issue there. The style of font that you chose made it very difficult to get those concentric lines on a finger. It just looked like a crappy oblong donut. Am I nuts? We're not looking at the same tattoos here. Why are they singling me out? It's put a seed of doubt in my head. 
judges have decided the winner of the Flash Challenge is Clean Rock One. Clean, I think you really showed off today with precision because you match those same letters. You match the L's, you match the I's, and you match the E's in that hand style. And I think you did a really good job. I can't believe Clean won again. This is bull For this flash challenge, you must create a massive but legible design using a very tiny medium. Push pins. What? And today, you must work in teams of two. Now you're looking at over a half a million Westcott pushpins. You and your teammate must place each pushpin into a six foot by four foot cork board, one by one. I use my hands for a living and you want me to push thousands of pushpins into a board to make a piece of art? This is absurd. From afar, the pins must blend together to create a legible, large scale work of art. It's gonna take so many pushpins to make something legible from across the room. This is gonna be a tough day. You have five hours to show legibility, and your time starts now. Let's wait, bro. This competition is the gauntlet, mentally and physically, and these guys are all feeling the pressure. What do you think? Empire State Building. You don't get much coverage out of one push pin, so it's a multiple amount of push pins that need to be in one place to achieve legible areas of what the design is composed of. One thing I was kind of thinking of was a gypsy head, so we could do some patterning in the headdress. I had an idea of like doing a big giant eagle. Like, I don't like that eagle. I knew it was gonna happen. Megan and Jane is being a pain in the ass. If we did a simplistic rose, you know, like- I don't like that rose very much, though. It's traditional. You're wasting time, you're wasting energy, you're wasting creative energy. I've seen other traditional roses that I think are You have stronger. to think simplicity that from across the room, what could you read? I, you know? I'm just at Jimmy. Look, I've looked at different traditional mm -hmm. roses. I'm really getting exhausted from having to work with dudes with such huge egos. But the problem is, is that most people do is they overthink it. I've won more flash challenges than anybody here. And yet here I am just being written off. I don't think we're overthinking it. to go. Every time I grab one of these, I'm dropping three. This is where you get a little more blood in your fingers. Way better. Ow! Ooh, that was a good one. Worst case scenario, man, we leave some of the brown for a skin tone. You make the bandana look as yeah, bad as possible. Yeah, if we have all the details looking super dope and we have a brown skin tone, yeah. I think that works. We're really gonna have to use this cork board as the skin tone because to put push pins in this huge canvas one at a time is gonna take forever. What is that, a snake? No claws? Yeah, his claws are in the water. They're under here. Why is he eating his own body? Y'all's girl's cross-eyed. You think? The face on that dragon looks harmless as What the hell is Sausage and Jesse doing? That's the worst looking dragon I've ever seen. It's like turning a cork board into a lunchbox. This looks like a five-year-old kid had a bunch of fun with some thumbtacks. Yellow would be in this area going that way. This challenge is way more difficult than we first thought. There's so many freaking push pins to put in here and not enough time to do it. Final hour, one hour remaining. <sighs> this is definitely not as easy as I anticipated. My hands are beat, my fingernails feel like they're gonna fall off. Staring at push pins for six hours. We may have bitten off more than we could chew. Are we gonna finish? Five, four, three, two, one. That is it, time is up. Done pushing tax. Ah, oh, man. I don't know about you guys, but are you believing? Oh, bleeding? nice. <sighs> it's pretty ballsy for Jesse and Sausage to do what might be an oriental dragon. Man, this thing looks like Time to critique your work. Jimmy and Megan Jean. Perfect cabbage rose, really strong lettering, and really, really strong pin saturation. It's a slam dunk, and it is completely legible. Damn it. I do not want Jimmy and Megan to win. Sausage and Jesse. A million problems in that thing. It's got no arms. You're missing a spine, then you're missing an ear. Oh yes, we are. You could have worked smarter and put a bigger head and not have to worry about doing as much of the body. But as far as being a well-drawn dragon, it is not. Thanks, guys. Christian and Clean. One of the things that makes your design most legible is the use of this board. It stands out very clear, very legible, and you've got a lot of fine detail. The white highlights in the lips, the highlights that you have inside the earrings and the hoops, the balance of the red paisley to the red lips. It has a really nice flow and it's strong. 
Maddie and Anthony. The background and the building had a lot of the same tone because there's a lot of the same amount of corkboard showing through. A little more contrast could have gone a long way. It was a time thing. Once you really start getting in with the pins, it's a totally different story. In hindsight, for the labor-intensive outside design, you could have put windows all inside that building, and that would have knocked it out of the park. I expected a lot more from these two guys. I need somebody in my alliance on top at all times. We've got to maintain control and take these other guys out. We've got to be on top of it. The judges have decided the winners of the Flash Challenge are Clean and Christian. Oh, good job, buddy. <laughs> Ours was good. Ours was finished. It had to be precise. Had the eyes been off, had the lips been off, the nose been out of whack, it would have changed the entire dynamic of it, and it is completely legible. Many ancient Asian cultures use tattoos to express status, beauty, and their most profound beliefs. They understood that highly visible tattoos were the strongest way to make a permanent statement. Today, you must help your canvas make a bold statement by tattooing a very prominent part of the body. Forehead. Forehead tattoos. Really? Out of control. If you mess up on somebody's arm, they can wear a shirt over it. Forehead? Are you going to walk around with a headband for the rest of your life? You must use ingenuity to create a design that works with the awkward shape of the forehead and complements the features of the face. Play to the sensibilities of who you're tattooing. They're asking to get their foreheads tattooed. Then be mindful of what it is you're tattooing and play into that. Do something beautiful. How you doing? Anthony, good to meet you. All right, guys, you have three hours to show ingenuity with forehead tattoos. And your time begins now. All right, man. So, talk to me. I want to get a spider web. Coming from there? I mean, if we shave part of my head, take it back. What were you thinking you wanted to get done? Lace butterfly, kind of like pastel here. That were kind of um, sacred geometry, um, mandala type thing that okay. kind of like goes to a point okay. right here. She wants her whole forehead blasted. I'm like, oh, hell no, girl. Mm -mm. I wouldn't get too crazy with it like being like too thick. You want to go solid white on the stars or just highlights? Highlights would be way doper. I'm not nervous one bit. I can tattoo anything, anytime. A little bit of shade right here. I hope these new guys drop the ball. I want to see the all veteran finale. This dude wants pure misanthropy on his forehead. That almost looks like my name, pure misanthropy. If I don't do a clean tattoo and smooth lines with this lettering, I'm sure he's gonna hate me. Final hour remaining, one hour, guys. Yeah, I'm not working, blending in. Oh, Lord have mercy, this ain't going well. I convinced her to go with a more feminine design, so I'm doing all this itty bitty dot work and lace patterns and beads. Every little detail takes time. I'm feeling the pressure right now. I'm sweating. Five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Time's up. Machine's down. That looks sick. I love it. I actually think she's got the head to pull off the shaved head look, huh? I can't believe Christian shaved this girl's head to give her like a big biker jailhouse tattoo on her face. I mean, even if she wanted to shave it all the way, she's got a good shaved head. She looks like a psychopath. All right, guys, it is now time to critique your work. Maddie, come on up. Why did you want to get this done? I have a genetic condition called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Mm -hmm. So basically, my joints dislocate very easily and don't really go back. Butterflies represent change and growth, a nice ray of hope. There's a lot of detail in it. The color is very vibrant, fits nice on her face. She was definitely the least tattooed canvas out of everybody, so I couldn't go all the way across her forehead, and she didn't want that. That's my favorite part of the whole thing, appealing to her sensibility, not going overboard. That's the name of the game, you gotta make them happy. Christian. The execution of this tattoo is top notch. It's tough, it's bold. I really like the fact that he went back and put the light gray shading over the top of the dots. It softened up the whole tattoo. I'm not a fan of the placement. It's a sideways yarmulke. It is abrasive for me, just sitting on the side of her head. I can grow it out and still part of it will be showing with the spider coming down. It looks badass. It's not really badass looking, and that spider looks like it's running away from the terrible haircut you just gave this girl. Anthony, what does your tattoo say? It says pure misanthropy. True and utter disgust for humanity. Why did you get that? I had a rough couple months. 
The shape of the lettering, the shape of the overall design, the fit to the forehead, very nice. Legibility, you do have to get really close up on it to read it. I would hate to get that close to him and then realize when I'm in his personal space. He hates you. That he hates me. <laughs> Are you happy with what Anthony did for you? Way more than I thought I would be. Thanks, guys. James. You really showed ingenuity just because you blended it into two different style tattoos on each side of the head. It framed her face very nice. The arc you put over her forehead with the dip in the center, very symmetrical. I was a little over the top and he kind of calmed me down. And he was like, well, let's make it a little bit more feminine and frame your face. Talking her off the ledge is definitely the right thing to do. I totally commend you on that. Clean. You basically reworked an existing tattoo, correct? It was about eight different tattoos. You showed a lot of ingenuity. You basically redid multiple tattoos and tied everything together into one big forehead tattoo. Couple of downsides, the two sides that fade in, they're not completely symmetrical. The cracks come a little bit of different shapes. If you could have just brought those in and made a more symmetrical shape, when you look at them straight on, it would have just been a little bit more on the aesthetic side. Clean did a rework, a couple of stars and some cracks and a touch up, that's not gonna win. The judges have decided the winner of the Flash Challenge is James. Yours was not as straightforward as everybody else's. You softened up a lot of work that was a little bit harsher, and I really feel that you did her service. Woo, I'm stoked. I ain't never won a Flash Challenge before. <laughs> <laughs>